Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GiveMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to be learning about Open Media Vault. Yes, normally I use FreeNAS for network storage device, but today we're going to look at Open Media Vault. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I am installing this on a Proxmox as a virtual machine. Uh, and it is one, it's going to be a storage solution for that. And ZFS is the back end on our machines. And generally speaking, when you're talking about free NAS, it doesn't like to be virtualized. So that's why I've chosen Open Media Vault. Let's get started. I'm Kevin Stevenson with Phase Logics. We're a managed IT services provider. If you'd like to hire us for projects, go ahead and check us out at GetMeTheGeek.com. If you find my videos valuable, go ahead and subscribe and like. If you'd like to support me directly, go ahead and buy me a coffee. All right, here we go. Here we're logged into our Proxmox machine. This Proxmox machine has a storage here. And let's just take a look at that. And it has 3.49 terabytes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a virtual machine and it's gonna be an Open Media Vault. But one of the things you want to do is go to Open Media Vault and download the ISO. That's easy enough. Click download. Here we go. So just go ahead and get this ISO. And we'll download the latest and greatest, which is these 5.39 in this particular case. You download it. Now, I have actually already downloaded it, and let me show you. So over here, we're going to go to local content, and you will see that I have this 5.39 already uploaded to it. Now, if you're wondering, you just click this upload button on the storage, select ISO, select the file that happens to be in your storage, boom, and then you can upload it. It's that simple to upload a ISO to your Proxmox server so next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and create a virtual machine now open media vault uh, is going to want a small hard drive to install the operating system eight gigs is fine 16 gigs you know really anything eight gigs is about perfect so you're going to create a small eight gig drive and then we're going to create another drive which is going to be our storage so let's go ahead and do that Create VM, and leave it this ID, and we're gonna call this NAS. And so here's where you're gonna have the CD, and you'll have a storage location where you upload it, and then you will see that ISO right there. And then we're gonna select Linux, and the, the latest kernel versions and hit next now graphics cards default uh, iSCSI now I'm actually going to choose the default up here and we're going to uncheck this QMU agent we're not going to check that and then we're going to go here and we're going to choose wait you can choose your storage if you have more storages they'll be here but in this particular case we just need eight gigabytes next now say I want a second hard drive well we're gonna add that after the fact we just should let's go ahead and give it two two cores um, let's just go ahead and choose the host CPU memory um, doesn't need a lot we're just gonna give it 4096 which is 4 gigs of RAM and If you have any troubles, you can always choose this E1000. We're going to choose the prayer virtualized IO and hit next. Now, you're only going to have one in here probably. So, and here it is confirmed. Now you can click create after start, but I'm going to hit 
finished. And now I'm going to go and it's going to create this machine down here. And when it's done, we're going to go ahead and add a, another drive to it. So you do that under hardware and you click add and you see all these drives, things you can add. Now let's click hard drive and storage location. And that's going to be three terabytes. And so there you have your two drives, eight gig and three terabytes. Now we are ready to start this guy up. Now, if you just want to look here up the options, by the way, you're going to see that it's going to start with the SCSI drive and the CD-ROM drive. That's the boot order. Let's go ahead and start this guy up. Click on the console. And there we have it. The first thing there is install. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this operation. I may speed up and during part of the part of this, but it's generally a pretty fast operation. English, United States, English. Okay, in this particular case, default is going to be Open Media Vault, but we're going to call it NAS. All right. Domain, you can leave that as it is, or you can change to something else. We're just going to leave it as is. Now you want to put a password in there. And of course, you will have to repeat that password, duplicate it. I am in the central time zone, and it's going to tell you that more than one storage device is detected, which is to be expected because we have two drives. And now you get to pick. So in this particular case, you're going to want to pick the 8.6 gigabyte one, and we're going to, which is the default up there, the first one in there, and install the operating system on that one. Okay, again, we are going to choose the United States. You choose where uh, is appropriate for yourself, and you have all of these different uh, locations that you can get your updates and everything. I'm just going to use the default. Uh, that's totally fine. You can choose anyone you want. And then I don't have a proxy. Now it's connecting to the mirror and, and checking. Wonderful. Now it's going to ask you to take out the uh, boot media and go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and just take this operation here. And the easiest way to do that is you can go over here to your hardware and click on this guy and click on edit and then you can select no media okay so now what we're going to do is do a quick login just to see what the ip address is all right so as you can see it is going to be 238 so let's go ahead and minimize this guy, open up a new tab, and we're going to go to 192.168.1.238. And that should show us our Open Media Vault. Open Media Vault by default, username is admin, and Open Media Vault is the password. Open Media Vault. Oops. So that will get us logged in for the very first time on this guy. So now if we go over here to disks, you're going to see that there are two drives, our initial drive and our three terabyte drive that we set up. A couple things to, to look forward to is going into the settings and you may want to change the auto log out. In this particular case, I'm going to change it to 30 minutes because I don't want it to log out in the middle of our sessions. Now, you can also go here and change your admin password. Okay, so save that. That's all been saved. 
<clears throat> and now you're going to get this apply. Now this this one in particular seems to take a little bit of time to apply it. So we'll wait just a second and get moving. All right. So let's move on to the next task. Let's take this guy and create a file system. Select device. Three terabyte. Label it. Pulling data and we're gonna choose ext4 but you have these other options so let's do that yes oh my goodness there it's gonna take just a few minutes to do this operation so let's just wait all right that's complete now we can go over here to shares I'm going to call it NFS. In this particular case, I'm going to do a NFS share uh, as a backup storage location for the primary Proxmox in this location. So we'll choose NFS. Actually, let's just change this to backup. <clears throat> back up and um, oh boy let's hit cancel real quick all right let's try this we'll call it NFS backup and we're gonna have a device show up here and I don't know why okay Something's going on here. I forgot to mount it. Let's go ahead and mount that guy. And apply. Because our new data our new data strive needed to be mounted by the links operating system in order for me to create the shares default. I know that's pretty obvious, but sometimes you forget the little things. Okay. Now let's go back to share folders. Hit add. We call it NFS backup. Now our new drive is going to show up. And we are going to, in this particular case, go ahead and do everybody read write. For purposes of this, uh, you probably would want to tighten down the security for, for purposes of production or whatever. But in this particular case, we're going to just show you how to do this. So that's that. And now you can go to NFS and you can go to shares add and we're going to go ahead and select a folder which you can do right here and now here's where nfs you know you you can restrict it to the particular host so what we're going to do is just go ahead and restrict it on to their network oops zero slash 24 so that, that is going to be this entire network. We're going to go ahead and make that read write and hit save. Of course, you got to apply these things. Now, remember, we call that NFS backwards. Backup. Now, we're going to also go and we're going to turn on NFS now as soon as this gets done applying. Enable. And save. So now we have an NFS share on this guy. It's three terabytes of storage that we should be able to mount on our Proxmox servers. So we have this Proxmox. 
which it houses the NFS, the NAS storage we just created. And then we have this guy, which is another one. And what we're going to do is this guy is going to, we're going to attach that NFS share to this guy in order to be able to back up this VM to the other machine. What this does for us is if this machine goes down, the backups are on the other machine and I can take that backup and restore it to that secondary machine as a Proxmox VM directly while the other machine gets repaired. So it's one of the ways we do to protect data. Let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Let's see, this is all good. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go over to our primary Proxmox machine and click on data center and click on storage and then we're gonna add NFS. Now, the idea is whatever you wanna call it, so we're gonna call it NFS backup. And the server is gonna be the Open Media Vault IP and that was 238. So 192.168.1.238. <clears throat> now, once you do that, it's going to go out there and query it, and this should show up as an export. And there it is, export NFS backup. And now you choose what you want to be able to put on this NFS storage. We're going to choose desk image, ISO, ISOs, containers, the VZ dump backup, which is the main thing we want here, containers. All right, and we're going to go ahead and make it three backups. Uh, let's just do two because this is not a huge storage, and I think this this actual VM is like 1.2 uh, terabyte or terabytes. So as a three, a little over three terabyte drive. So if we do two, it'll still have enough storage. So click add. Alrighty then. So now you see this NFS backup over here. So if I click on that guy, you'll see a summary that says it's basically three terabytes. And you can go to the content and there'll be nothing in there, but you can upload stuff. Like if you wanted to upload an ISO or something like that, then you can do that. And Here's the beauty. I can go over here to the Proxmox machine data center and go to backups. And I can click on the Saturday backup here and I can edit it and change it from local storage to this NFS backup. And so all these things should be the same. You hit OK. And so now the backups are set up to go here. So any any of these backups will just back up there and, and there you go. That's Open Media Vault and how to use it to back up your free NAS or back up your Proxmox or your virtual machines in a Proxmox environment. And uh, so if you're looking for a NAS operating system that you can virtualize, Open Media Vault is a good choice. Uh, of course, you can use any Linux uh, distro to create a NAS or an NFS store or CIFS store. But uh, if you're looking for a quick, easy web management, Open Media Vault is a good one. Um, Open Media Vault is, I'm going to say it's not as powerful as free NAS, true NAS. Um, but it is definitely a good alternative. Thanks for joining me. I'm Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com.